Hi class, today we're going to be looking at Chapter 9, Section 2. We'll be doing a few definitions here to, to start out, and then we'll be doing some practice Punnett squares a little bit. Um, this will lead into um, a little probability lab with Punnett squares, just kind of getting used to them, and then into some practice Punnett squares. We'll be doing those for a couple days. So first, we're just going to take in some definitions, and if you're using your notes packet, um, we are just below the Law of Independent Assortment and Law of Segregation section, and it says Key Definitions. Right above the Key Definitions, it says Molecular Genetics. You can write this in there. Um, the study of structure and function of chromosomes and genes. So basically, we're looking at the genes themselves and what is spe particularly or specifically there at that gene level. So first, we have a term allele. An allele just means the alternate form of a gene or the different options for a trait. Another way you could write it is just different options for a trait. So some examples here. Um, uh, the dominant allele will be a capital letter and the recessive allele will be a lowercase letter. Now, a couple ideas here, things to remember. Notice that our letters are still big B and little b. They're the same letter, it's just the capital version or the lowercase version. And um, you can't pick just another random letter when it's a recessive allele. It has to be um, just the lowercase version of that dominant letter. A lot of times for me, I put a line over top of that lowercase letter because there are some letters that we're going to use that look very similar as a capital or a lowercase letter. For example, S and S look very similar. So if you put a line over that little lowercase s, at least you're identifying it and noticing it as the recessive letter. An example or picture of what that would look like is um, here if we have a chromosome, you have as an individual, if this was a purple and white flower, there's the purple allele or the white allele. Now you could be what's called heterozygous, meaning that we have the purple um, allele, which is big P, and the little p, which means you're heterozygous, or you could be homozygous, and you could have two big P, and then another one here would be big P, or you could be homozygous recessive, which would be a little and a little. So um, when we look at that here in the next couple slides, you'll see kind of that comparison. So genotype is our next word, and it is the genetic makeup of the organisms, which just means it's the actual letters for a trait. Now on your chromosomes you don't have all these little letters that are showing up, but when we write them so that we can represent them in some way, we show them as the letters. Now again, I usually put um, little lines over top of my lowercase letters. Obviously with B's they're pretty obvious which one is a capital and which one's a lowercase. Phenotype is what that physical appearance is for that individual. So here if we're doing fur color, for an animal, we might have black fur versus white fur. And one would be dominant, one would be recessive. So it's actually what you are seeing in that individual. It's a little less specific than the genotype, um, but it's really obvious. Usually you can just identify it based on looking at that individual. So this is an example kind of of what that would look like. Um, if we have big P, big P, that's genotype. And then the phenotype of that is purple. If we have big little, then the phenotype is purple. If we have big little, the phenotype is purple. And then little little is white. So in order to show a recessive trait, you have to have two of the little letters or two of the recessive alleles. So a couple more terms. We have homozygous, which means same genes. Um, the term here, homo, means same. And so we have same genes. And in this case, it can be one of two things. You can have big, big, which is homozygous dominant, or you can have little, little, which is homozygous recessive. Heterozygous means different genes. Hetero here means different. And so in this case, we have different genes. And so the organism has different alleles for the characteristic. And that means that they have a big letter and a little letter. Anytime you see heterozygous, that just means big letter, little letter. 
Okay, the next part is looking at how Punnett squares work. And basically, Punnett squares are just the likelihood that something's going to happen, and that's also what probability is. So probability is the likelihood of an event, and that's how you could put this definition in your, um, in your notes packet. And when we're looking at Punnett squares, we are going to be looking at the likelihood that an individual is going to have a specific trait. So this is an example of your Punnett square here. Um, we have, uh, in this case, a parent that has a big R and a little r. And then we have another parent that has a big R and a little r. So when we pull those into the Punnett square, we're seeing that there's an individual that could, um, the probability is that there's an individual that could be big R, big R. There's the chance that there would be two individuals that would be big R, little r, and there's a chance, um, or one out of four chance, that they would be little r, little r. Now, all of this is just a probability. We're just looking at the possibility of your offspring having certain traits. This probability is brand new every single time that you have a child. So it's not like um, I have a three out of four chance to have the dominant trait show up and only one out of four chance to not have that dominant trait, to have the recessive. It doesn't mean that I'm going to have three children that definitely have the dominant trait and one that doesn't. It's just telling me that that's my chances. Every time you have a child, you have a three out of four chance for dominant and one out of four for recessive in this case. So um, you could have five children and none of them have the recessive trait. Or you could have one child and they have the recessive trait. So it's um, our probability is new, a brand new, every single time. Same idea when you flip a coin. If you flip a coin, it's a 50-50 chance it's going to be heads. When I go to flip it the second time, I still have a 50-50 chance it's going to be heads. Every single time you flip that coin. So when we do Punnett squares, we have um, basically a diagram that shows us our chances of passing on specific traits. Sometimes these will be disease traits that you want to look at. Most of the time in our Punnett squares, they're just kind of random ones that we pick. So um, there's three types of Punnett squares. Monohybrid, which just looks at one trait. Dihybrid looks at two traits. And trihybrid looks at three traits. So a monohybrid cross involves one characteristic and two contrasting traits. Just in that box where it says monohybrid cross, just write that in. One characteristic, two contrasting traits. In our example here, we have big P being purple, and we have little p representing white. That's what that means, two contrasting traits, showing what are our two things or two alleles. What are the allele possibilities? In this case, we're looking at purple flower versus white flower. It's still one characteristic. It's still color of flower, but it's showing me the two possibilities that can be there. So our example here with one characteristic is flower color, and our two contrasting traits are purple versus white. Okay, in the dihybrid cross, and you can just put this into the box that shows dihybrid cross, um, it is a cross between two individuals still that involves two pairs of contrasting traits. Just write this in. Two characteristics. So in this case, we're looking at seed, or sorry, I should say pod color. Let's cross that out. Pod color and pod shape. So our actual letters would be our four contrasting traits. Big Y is yellow. Little Y is green. Big R is round and little r is wrinkled. So that's showing us our traits. This part right here is a key thing to write in as well. A dihybrid cross is going to tell us the chances or probability of getting these two traits together. Now why would this be important? Um, in humans maybe we'd have some times that we would look at this, but especially if you are breeding um, an animal or breeding a certain type of plant, you would want to know what are my chances of being able to get these two traits that people want in their animal or in their flower um, to be passed on together. And so you would uh, maybe do a probability just to see what my chances are. Because you don't want to waste your time uh, breeding these plants um, to get something that people don't want. So you want to make sure that you're getting 
getting your best chance of passing on specific traits. Okay, and then the last thing we're going to look at today is a test cross. So a test cross is used to find um, an unknown genotype. Now, why, does, why is it unknown? And that's kind of the um, main question, I guess. So we want to find out, in this case, we know red is dominant. But if we have a red flower, we're not sure if they're pure, big R, big R, or if they're hybrid, big R, little r. So what you would do is do a Punnett square to show what the unknown, um, to try and figure out what the unknown flower is. So you always... in a test cross, cross the unknown flower with a pure recessive. Reason? We know what the genotype is of a recessive flower. It's little, little, or a recessive trait. So we would go ahead and cross these and see what we get in the offspring, in our probability. So these are our results. And in your um, notes packet, you have a place that you can draw in your Punnett square. We'll show that here in the direction that we do it. You can show if the parent is big little, this is what you'll get. These are the results if the flower is hybrid. You get 50% red, 50% white. And then if the parent is pure, big R, big R, then all of the offspring are going to be red. Hundred percent red. Okay, so if you do a test cross, the goal is to find out what is the parent. Are they big, big, or are they big, little? And if you notice in the offspring that any of them show the recessive trait, then we know that they were big, little, because they could pass on that recessive trait. If all of the offspring show the dominant trait, then more than likely they were big, big. And we'll get into practicing some of those later on as well.